What's up guys? It is Corey from Super Kami Guru 9000 and I just got done watching the brand new Godzilla movie and as an old school Godzilla fan, I'm pretty damn satisfied. So join me as I review the new Godzilla film. Now keep in mind, I'm going to talk about all elements of this movie. There are going to be massive spoilers ahead. So if you have not seen this, go to your nearest theater, buy a ticket, watch it, and come back, because I'm going to talk about all of the badass juicy bits. So, one of my favorite things about Godzilla is its approach to actually revealing its monsters. This movie did not blow its load too early. In fact, it saved most of the monster mashing for the climax of the film, and I think that worked to its credit. The entire film sort of had this, like, Spielbergian effect to it, and I only say that because it reminds me of classic monster movies like Jaws and Jurassic Park, where they wait a very long time to reveal the monster, but when they finally do, it leaves an impact. When they show Godzilla in full for the very first time in this movie, it looks so badass, and they let you focus on him for just a second before he lets out this massive, spine-tingling roar. Make sure to see this movie in a theater with a very nice screen and really booming speakers because it's going to leave quite an impact. One of the weakest elements of this film, though, I think is probably going to be the human element. There were some pretty good actors, but for the most part, most of the humans here were just sort of in the way of the monsters. The main story is having to deal with Brian Cranston, who is still trying to get over the death of his wife, which he feels is actually sort of involved with a cover-up of these massive monsters. And he's trying to get to the bottom of the truth, and he's also trying to sort of fix this, like, estranged relationship that he has with his son. About halfway into the first act, however, Brian Cranston dies. His character is killed off, and it's a complete shame, because he's definitely the best actor of the entire movie. And that's where the uh, story shifts to his son, Ford, who is in the military, and he gets caught up in this entire monster situation. The other standout human character is Ken Watanabe, who is famous for movies like The Last Samurai and Batman Begins. And in this movie, he gets to chew all of the badass scenery by talking about how awesome Godzilla is. In fact, he's the one who actually introduces the story about Godzilla, how he was this massive radioactive creature who was actually awoken by the uh, atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and even the testing in the Gulf, which was actually trying to kill Godzilla. That's sort of the big twist in this movie. And then Godzilla just sort of disappeared for a while. However, these other monsters, which uh, actually lived in the core of the Earth and fed off radiation, were able to escape. And they are known as the Muto. They are the monsters that Godzilla is going to be fighting against in this movie. And they're completely brand new original monsters. And they look pretty cool. They're basically these like weird bug bat looking creatures. They kind of remind me of the stuff from Cloverfield a little bit. Their faces actually look like the Graboids from Tremors, if you've ever actually seen those movies. But it's when they finally shift to the monsters and Godzilla where things really start to pop off and things get really exciting. And even after an hour into the film, when they finally start to show Godzilla for the first time, you just cannot help but get really excited. In fact, this the, the actual destruction that the monsters cause is just incredible. I actually like the scene in Hawaii where Godzilla is coming in for the first time and all of the ocean water is receding because he's finally walking in. It's incredibly intense, and they're making sure not to show us too much of Godzilla. They save it all for the final battle of the film, which takes place in San Francisco, which does not disappoint. This is all followed by that famous scene that you saw in the trailers where the soldiers are coming in on the halo jump and they're coming down into the city. This is actually when Godzilla is fighting against the two Muto creatures, which are trying to reproduce and raise babies like in this underground cavern in the bottom of the city. They're trying to raise their young, and that's why they keep attacking all these places that are covered in radiation and power plants and trying to get all these bombs. And this just attracts Godzilla. And this is the part of the movie that I thought was the most interesting because all of the big trailers for this movie are sort of trying to make it seem as if Godzilla is more like his original counterpart from the original 1954 Godzilla movie where he was seen as sort of like the physical manifestation of nature's hatred for mankind for dropping the atomic bomb. And in some aspects he is. But towards the end of the movie, you can definitely see that they're drawing a little more inspiration from the Godzilla scene in the 1960s, the 1970s, the 90s, and so on, where he was fighting against other monsters and being sort of the pseudo-savior of Earth. 
And that's when we get to see him beat the crap out of these Mutos. However, it's not exactly easy for him. The Mutos beat the crap out of him too. There's a lot of really intense battling here. And the way that Godzilla fights is sort of a combination of the old way he fights and a little more animalistic. He uses his mouth a lot. He actually has this really great scene where he's able to grab one of the Muto with his mouth and slam them into multiple buildings at once. It's really, really incredible. But one of the best parts about this movie and the thing that I was really, really excited about was getting to see Godzilla use his atomic breath because they completely omitted it in the 1998 shitty Ferris Bueller vs. Godzilla movie and they really use it to full effect in this movie. And they actually manage to use it in a way that's never been seen in any other Godzilla movie before. And I just think that's freaking awesome. So, the first time he uses his atomic breath is when the Muto have, like, defeated him. And it looks like he's just down on the ground in the dust. And suddenly, with all of this massive smoke cloud appears, you see these blue lights start to appear. And you realize that they're actually Godzilla's spines slowly starting to glow. And that's when he finally just puffs himself up and lets his atomic breath roar out. It is blue, it is a stream of death, and it looks awesome. And they only use it twice in the film, but it's the second time that it's used, which is awesome. I've already said it before, spoiler alert, this is definitely the best part of the movie. It's the final bit where Godzilla finishes off the second Muto by grabbing its mouth. And when I was watching this scene for the first time, I'm like, is he going to pull a King Kong and like rip its jaw? No, he takes it to the next level. He forcibly opens the mandibles of the Muto and then blasts his atomic breath into its mouth until its head is completely decapitated and then it just rips it off and does a massive badass Godzilla roar. One of the best parts of the movie. The other thing that I really liked is that they certainly emphasize that Godzilla is completely indestructible. Nothing can stop him. In fact, I love this one scene, which almost seems like a big middle finger to the 1998 Godzilla movie. Because at the end of that movie, Godzilla gets killed on a bridge by, like, a couple of missiles. In this movie, Godzilla eats missiles like candy. They don't even affect him. They're like mosquito bites to him. And there's a scene where he's moving into San Francisco, and he's going up against this bridge, and the military is attacking him, and they're shooting him with missiles, and he just rips right through a bridge, and continues walking forward, destroying everything in his path. The military doesn't do shit against Godzilla in this movie, and that's something that they got right. Another thing that made this movie good is that they actually paid homage to a lot of classic Godzilla references. I do like the fact that Ken Watanabe, when he was explaining Godzilla for the first time, actually referred to him as Gojira, which is his original name in the Japanese film. But there were also two Mothra references in the entire film. You may have missed them, they were so quick. In the beginning of the movie, there is a scene where the power plant is being attacked by the Mutos, and this is when Brian Cranston's wife is dying, and there's this schoolroom, and in the schoolroom there's this poster with all of these various butterflies on them, and at the very top is Mothra. It's the same color wings, it's all there, but it got even better because later in the film there's a scene where they go to the city which was destroyed by all of the radiation, and both Brian Cranston and their son go to their original home, and inside is this, like, terrarium, or almost like this tank with these cocoons in it. And at the bottom is this little label that says Moth. But right next to it is this little sticky note, which has R-A on it. Moth. Ra. We have two Mothra little references in this movie, and I thought that that was really great. Otherwise, this movie completely delivered on what I think it was supposed to do. It gave us a nice, not-too-serious Godzilla movie that allows us to see both facets of the creature as both a bane of mankind and as a savior of the planet. And I especially liked the fact that Godzilla does not die in this movie. They make it seem like he might at the very end of the film when he collapses after defeating the Muto, but he immediately stands up and starts walking towards the ocean and lets out a badass, awesome roar. Check out Godzilla if you're into massive kaiju battle films. If you're a Godzilla fan, I think you're going to enjoy this. It's certainly better than the 1998 version, and I think it falls in line with a lot of the classic Godzilla movies from the 60s and 70s, and certainly stands on its own. I'm really interested to see how the Japanese audience is going to react to this film, because they're actually not going to get it for, I believe, another month or so. It's pretty strange that we actually got it first before they did. But like I said, if you're into Godzilla at all, check out the movie. 
And if you did see Godzilla, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. And you can please tell me with your comments below. What did you think of the brand new movie? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Did you have any favorite moments? And what are your favorite Godzilla movies? You can tell me with your comments below. Remember guys, before you leave today, make sure and hit that like button so you can give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out our videos. If you want to see all of our latest anime and manga reviews, make sure and subscribe to the channel as well. You can also check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. So, I'll see you next time guys. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.